Solomon, the son of David was strengthened in his kingdom and the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel in Jerusalem that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Zion, the city of David. Then all the men of Israel assembled with King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark. Then they brought up the Ark of the Lord, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Also, King Solomon, and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled with him, was with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. Then the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the temple, to the most holy place under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from the outside, and they are there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. When the priests came out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves, without keeping to their divisions, and the Levites who were the singers, all those of Azaph and Hermon and Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar. They were clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them one hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. Indeed it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon spoke, the Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. Solomon turned to bless the whole assembly of Israel while all the assembly of Israel was standing. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and with his hand has fulfilled it. The Lord saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house that my name might be there, nor did I choose any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Yet, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name may be there, and I chose David to be over my people Israel. It was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you will not build the temple, but your son who will come from your body, he will build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word, which he spoke, and I have filled the position of my father David, and I sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. Also, I have built the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. There, I have made a place for the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers and the children of Israel when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven, for Solomon had made a bronze platform and had set it in the midst of the court, and he stood on it, knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven above or on earth below like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you, with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David my father, you have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David my father, saying, You will not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel, only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk before me as you have walked before me. And now I pray, O God of Israel, 
let your word come true which you have spoken to your servant David my father. Solomon continued, But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold heaven, and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built! Yet regard the prayer of your servant, and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you today, that your eyes may be open toward this temple night and day, toward the place of where you said you would put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant, and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If anyone sins against his neighbor, and is forced to take an oath, and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear in heaven and act, and judge your servants condemning the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name, and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk, and send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence, or blight or mildew, locusts, or grasshoppers, when their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone, or by all your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart, and spreads out his hands toward this temple, then here in heaven, your dwelling place, and forgive, and act, and give to everyone according to all his ways whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, a Gentile, but has come from a far country for your name's sake, for they will hear of your great name and your strong hand and your outstretched arm, when he comes and prays toward this temple, hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner, the Gentile calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemy, wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord toward the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take them captive to the land of the enemy far or near, yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication to you in the land of those who took them captive saying, We have sinned and done wrong, we have committed wickedness, and when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who led them away captive, and pray to you toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you, and all their transgressions which they have transgressed against you, and grant them compassion before those who took them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they are your people and your inheritance, whom you brought out of Egypt, out of the iron furnace, that your eyes may be open to the supplication of your servant and the supplication of your people Israel to listen to them whenever they call to you. For you separated them from among all the peoples of the earth to be your inheritance, as you spoke by your servant Moses when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. Now therefore, arise O Lord God to your resting place, you, and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Lord God be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God do not turn away the face of your anointed, remember the mercies of your servant David. When Solomon had finished praying all this prayer and supplication to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. Then he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. 
there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised through his servant Moses, and may the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to himself to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, with which I have made supplication before the Lord, be near the Lord our God day and night that he may maintain the cause of his people Israel as each day may require, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, there is no other. Let your heart therefore be loyal to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments, as at this day. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings which he offered to the Lord, 22,000 bulls and 120,000 sheep. Then, the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house to the Lord. And the priests attended to their services, the Levites also with instruments of the music of the Lord, which King David had made to praise the Lord saying, For his mercy endures forever. Whenever David offered praise by their ministry, the priests sounded trumpets opposite them while all Israel stood. On the same day the king consecrated the middle of the court that was in front of the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the bronze altar that was before the Lord was so small to receive the burnt offerings. At that time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him, a very great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. Then on the eighth day they held a sacred assembly, for they observed the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month, he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the good that the Lord had done for David, for Solomon, and for his people Israel. So Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. It came to pass, when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire which he wanted to do, that the Lord appeared to him the second time by night, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me, and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel as I promised David your father saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them and cut off Israel from the land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss, and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they will answer, because they forsook the Lord their God who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have embraced other gods and worshipped them and served them, therefore the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. At the end of twenty years later, 
when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house, for Hiram the king of Tyre had supplied Solomon with cedar and cypress and gold, as much as he desired, that king Solomon then gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. Then Hiram went from Tyre to see the cities, which Solomon had given him, but they did not please him. So he said, What kind of cities are these which you have given me my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul, and took the cities anyway. Then Hiram sent the king one hundred and twenty talents of gold. Apparently, Hiram gave back the cities or he was paying Solomon to rebuild the cities, and Solomon built them and settled the children of Israel there. Now it was during the reign of Solomon, that forced labor increased. The reason for the labor force, was to raise labor to build the house of the Lord, his own house, the Milo, the wall of Jerusalem, and three cities for his commercial, administrative and military centers, Hazer, Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, king of Egypt had taken Gezer, burned it with fire, had killed the Canaanites who dwelt in the city, and had given it as dowry to his daughter, Solomon's wife. Solomon went to Hamathzebah and seized it. Then Solomon built Gezer, Lower Beth Haran, Baalath, and Tadmor in the wilderness in the land of Judah, fortified cities with walls, gates, bars, and all the storage cities which he built in Hamath that Solomon had, cities for his chariots and cities for his cavalry, and whatever Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people who were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites who were not of the children of Israel, that is, their descendants who were left in the land after them whom the children of Israel had not been able to destroy completely, from these Solomon raised forced labor. But Solomon did not make the children of Israel servants for his work because some were men of war, captains of his officers, captains of his chariots, and his cavalry. Others were chiefs of the officials of King Solomon, 250 who ruled over the people. Solomon brought the daughter of Pharaoh up from the city of David to the house he had built for her, for he said, My wife will not dwell in the house of David king of Israel, because the places to which the ark of the Lord has come are holy. Solomon offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of the Lord which he had built before the vestibule, according to the daily rate, offering according to the commandment of Moses, for the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the three appointed yearly feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. According to the order of David his father, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their service, the Levites for their duties, to praise and serve before the priests, as the duty of each day required, and the gatekeepers by their divisions at each gate, for so David the man of God had commanded. They did not depart from the command of the king to the priests and levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasuries. It was three times a year that Solomon offered burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar which he had built for the Lord, and he burned incense with them on the altar that was before the Lord. Now all the work of Solomon was well ordered from the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord until it was finished. Then, the house of the Lord was completed. King Solomon also built a fleet of ships at Ezion Geber, which is near Elath on the sea coast of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. Hiram also sent him ships by the hand of his servants, and seamen who knew the sea to work with the servants of Solomon. They went with the servants of Solomon to Ophir, acquired 450 talents of gold from there and brought it to King Solomon. The land of Sheba was a mountainous ancient country in southwest Arabia, today it is Yemen. A people called the Sabaeans whose commercial enterprises stretched from Syria to East Africa to distant India occupied the land of Sheba at that time. The Sabaeans were the same people who came to Job, raided him of his oxen and donkeys, and killed his servants with the edge of the sword. The country of Sheba developed into a strong commercial power having international trade control of the trade routes through its land. Camel caravans followed routes northward across its dry regions, bearing their spices, gold in abundance, perfumes, and incense, precious stones and other commodities bordering the Mediterranean Sea. When the Queen of Sheba, or the Queen of the South as she was referred to by the Lord Jesus, heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, 
she traveled from the region of Ethiopia, south of Egypt, and came to Jerusalem to visit King Solomon to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. It was when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. Solomon answered all her questions, there was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes, and indeed the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord has loved Israel forever, therefore he made you king to do justice and righteousness. The queen gave King Solomon 120 talents of gold, spices, in great quantity, and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also, the ships of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought great quantities of almig, or algam, wood, and precious stones from Ophir. King Solomon made steps and walkways of the almig wood for the house of the Lord and for the king's house. He also made harps and stringed instruments for singers, and there were none such as these seen before in the land of Judah. There never again came such almig wood, nor has the like been seen this day. Almig or algam is a large leguminous tree native to India and Ceylon. While its identity is uncertain, many consider it the red sandalwood. Its blossoms were pea-like, and its wood was close-grained, dark outside, and red within. It was highly scented, making it resistant to insects. Most authorities believe that algam and almig are two forms of the same wood. Solomon had ordered this wood from Lebanon, which was well suited for making the musical instruments, cabinet work, and pillars for the temple. Illustrated Dictionary of the Bible Now King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, much more than she had brought to the king. He also gave her according to the royal generosity. Then she turned and went to her own country, she, and her servants. Solomon received yearly gold weighing 666 talents, besides that from the traveling merchants, from income of traders, from all the kings of Arabia, and from the governors of the country. He also made 300 shields of hammered gold containing 300 shekels of gold in each shield. Solomon put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Likewise, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round at the back, there were armrests on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the armrests. Twelve lions stood there, one on each side of the six steps, nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Not one was silver, for this was accounted as nothing in the days of Solomon. The king had merchant ships at sea with the fleet of Hiram. Once every three years the merchant ships brought gold, silver, ivory, apes, and monkeys. All the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his present, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and mules at a set rate year by year. Therefore, King Solomon surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots, and 12,000 horsemen whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. He reigned over all the kings from the river to the land of the Philistines as far as the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedar trees as abundant as the sycamores, which are in the lowland. In addition, 
they brought horses to Solomon imported from Egypt and Kevi at the current price. A chariot that was imported from Egypt cost 600 shekels of silver and a horse 150, and thus, through their agents, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. Now, King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh. He loved women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, or they will surely turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these women in love, and his heart was turned from the Lord. In addition, Solomon had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it was so, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech the abomination of the people of Ammon, and he did likewise for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Therefore, the Lord became angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. So the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this, and have not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days, for the sake of your father David, I will tear it out of the hand of your son. But I will not tear away the whole kingdom, I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem which I have chosen. Tearing the kingdom in two is the prophecy the Lord gave Solomon that would happen through the reign of his son, Rehoboam. The tribes that would stay under the promise of God would be the tribe of Judah and Benjamin belonging to the southern kingdom of Judah. Solomon's servant Jeroboam would be given the other ten tribes and they would occupy the northern kingdom of Israel. Solomon's kingdom would later become the divided kingdom. It will be for the sins of Solomon that the Lord God would now raise up adversaries against him, when there was before peace in his kingdom. The Lord raised up an adversary Hadad, the Edomite. Hadad was a descendant of the king in Edom. When David was in Edom, and Job the commander of the army had gone up to bury the slain after he had killed every male in Edom. For six months Job remained there with all Israel until he had cut down every male. But Hadad fled to go to Egypt, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him. Hadad was still a little child. Then they arose from Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them from Paran, came to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt who gave him a house, apportioned food for him, and gave him land. Moreover, Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him as wife, the sister of his own wife, that is, the sister of Queen Topanes. Then the sister of Topanes bore him Jenubat his son, whom Topanes weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Jenubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. When Hadad heard in Egypt that David rested with his fathers and that Job the commander of the army was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said to him, But what have you lacked with me that suddenly you seek to go to your own country? He answered, Nothing, but do let me go anyway. God raised up another adversary against Solomon, reason the son of Iliada who had fled from his lord, Hadahezer king of Zeba. Then he gathered men to him and became captain over a band of raiders when David killed those of Zeba, and they went to Damascus and dwelt there and reigned in Damascus. He was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, besides the trouble that had it caused, and he abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. Solomon's servant, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite from Zirda whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow also rebelled against Solomon. 
Solomon had built the millow and repaired the damages to the city of David his father. The man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing that the young man was industrious, made him the officer over all the labor force of the house of Joseph. Now it happened at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite met him on the way, and he had clothed himself with a new garment, and the two were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new garment that was on him and tore it into twelve pieces. Then he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to you, but he will have one tribe for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashtoreth the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh the god of the Moabites, and Milcom the god of the people of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do what is right in my eyes and keep my statutes and my judgment as did his father David. But I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, because I have made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it to you ten tribes, and to his son I will give one tribe that my servant David may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. Therefore, I will take you and you will reign over all your heart desires, and you will be king over Israel. Then it will be, if you heed all that I command you, walk in my ways and do what is right in my sight to keep my statutes and my commandments, as my servant David did, then I will be with you and build for you an enduring house as I built for David, and will give Israel to you. And I will afflict the descendants of David because of this, but not forever. Solomon, therefore, sought to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt, to Shishak king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. The rest of the acts of Solomon, all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Iddo the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat? The period that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem and over all Israel was forty years. Then Solomon rested with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David with his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. This is the last part of the kings of Israel. Our journey will now take us to a divided kingdom, the northern and southern kingdom ruled by many kings. I pray that you continue to listen. If this video was a blessing to you, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks.